Tracy Martin. Kia ora, Mr Speaker. You know you're in trouble, sir, when the most honest person on that side of the House is John Banks. <laughs> 50 to 60 schools is actually the vision. 50 A to point 60 of order. Schools. Maggie Barry. I take exception and offence to that yeah. remark. I am an honest person. Yeah. I, I think order. I'm on my feet. Now, we know that in this House, all members are regarded as honourable members. We, I think the debate will make more progress if we stay away from personal attacks and debate the issues. Tracy Martin. Uh, Mr Speaker. Is this a new point of order? Yes, it is, Mr Speaker. Denise Rose. I thought the um, Speaker's orders were that you could not say that you were offended by a comment that went to another member, sir. Oh, no, that's, that's the same point of order. Now, I've already ruled on it. The member is quite out of order raising an issue after I've ruled on it. Tracy Martin. Is this a new point of order? Yes, it is, and it is another offensive comment from John Banks, who just described my colleague as stupid. That is not an order in this House. And well, I'm I did not hear the comment. Well, and I did I'm... hear it. I heard it. Did the member... Will the member withdraw the point? No. Tracy Martin. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The reality is this is an emotive issue. These are our children we're talking about. That's why it's emotive. These are the children that each one of us care about. I have no doubt that members of the government care about the education of children. I have no doubt that Mr Banks believes somewhere inside himself that this is a good policy. Unfortunately, as Peter Gluckman just said, Professor Sir Peter Gluckman just said earlier this evening, this is not evidence-based policy. This is not evidence-based policy, sir. So Peter Gluckman was here earlier this evening in the theatre read promoting evidence-based policy so that downstream these decisions are endurable. This is not an endurable decision. And New Zealand First needs to join with the Labour Party and the Green Party with issuing a warning. And that warning is, please do not mortgage your home to open a charter school. Please do not put yourself in debt to open a charter school, because it is very unlikely that you have a long future. Any best practice developed inside a charter school will be bought inside the state school system. And it is possible that you may want to shift from a charter school to a private school. But please, I, endure, I beg you, do not put yourself in debt to do this, because its future is too unstable. Now, if, sir, this policy was about targeting those children who are achieving in the tail, the stay nine one to three, and that was whom these schools had to direct their services, that would be different. If, sir, these schools had to provide something that is not currently supported for those students that Mr Banks refers to in the tale of underachievement, for example, dyslexic or dyspraxic children, that would be different. If these schools had closed roles only to target those students we are not supporting well enough inside our public school system, that would be different, but they are not. And Catherine Isaacs came to my office and said, no, 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 we're targeting Middle New Zealand. There is no money in decile one, two, three, stay nine, one, two, three children. They are very intensive work and they deserve it. But you cannot skim a profit off them. So there lies the flaw. If this was for not, if this was not for profit, that would be different. But none of those things are inside this bill. And I still, sir, try to find out who is driving this bill, because it is not the New Zealand public. Private schools' roles have not increased from the 5% for the last 30 years. They have not increased. There is no more demand for that style of education. And yet, possibly, possibly, this, this door was opened when the recession began in 2008 and private schools' roles started to drop. Because, and maybe, just maybe, sir, it's because the public system is doing so well. 
The public system is doing so well, particularly over the last few years, with the extra supports that needed to be in place, with more professional development, compulsory de professional development around uh, kitahitanga and um, kahekatea, then we might have seen either further leaps inside the public system. But perhaps because the mainstream public school system is doing so well, private schools are under pressure. Perhaps that's what's driving this, sir, because there is no appetite for it out in the real world. Now, I need to also issue another word of warning. Under this legislation, it is not possible to have a school for Māori. It is not possible to have a school for Pacifica students. This is an open door policy. So for Mr Toby Curtis and for Mr Pem Bird, who think that they will take 23 successful kura from inside the current Education Act 1989, and I believe my colleague Materia Ture made the minister give us volumes in, their, in her answer today at question time while she was trying not to say something. For Dr Toby Curtis and Pem Bird, who is the president of the Māori Party and therefore has, the Māori Party has a conflict of interest in this House, are intending to take, and I predict, 23 kura outside the Education Act 1989 and turn them into charter schools because they can then throw away the current curriculum, deliver what they believe is more culturally appropriate, and do what they like. Now, the word is that there's a contract here, though. There's a contract. Trust us. Trust us, said the minute, says the minister, because there's a contract. Earlier today, we had a debate about a contract. That was a pretty big contract. It had KPIs in it. It had levels of achievement that had to be reached, or they would be shut down or it would be stopped. Why should we be confident, sir, with our children that these contracts will be any different? And the point is, and the point is that we won't know the KPIs. We won't know the KPIs. And if it's a primary school, we have a six-year window. We have a six-year window with which to get it right. Are we doing it 100% right? No, we're not. But $19 million taken currently out of vote education, instead of supporting literacy support for five and six-year-olds with an identified need, instead of supporting dyslexic and dyspraxic children inside our systems, instead of supporting truancy officers to make sure children go to school, we have decided to open another competitor. And the other word that's been bandied about, the other thing that is said to calm us all, to calm the public, is that these are, this is about choice. This is about choice, but actually to have true choice, just as Dr Gluckman said earlier today, to have true choice, you need to be truly informed. You need to know all the pieces of information before you can make a choice. There has been information withheld from the New Zealand public. For one thing, there is no transparency around the high-quality applicants for the 35 schools. I happen to know one school who's found themselves on that list but never asked to be on it. <coughs> now, I find that very, very interesting. Apparently, they were asked, they were asked to speak at an act, uh, a, an act electorate meeting, and the next thing they know, they've got their name on a charter school list. There are things that have not been said. There are things that have not been said. I cannot believe, I choose not to believe, that my colleagues on the Education and Science Select Committee truly support this bill. I understand their circumstances. I understand why they have had to stand and say what they do. Very little, to be perfectly honest, because there's very little they can say. But I'm sad for them. Uh, because their names will be on this legislation, on this legislation, when it passes through this House. The other thing I do want to touch on, sir, is the, the clause that has been inserted around the governance um, and around making boards of trustees responsible for academic outcomes um, of all students. I find that very interesting. It's interesting because, sir, why the boards of trustees? Why the boards of trustees is the question. They are not the professional leaders of the school. They are elected parent trustees who are there to govern the school, not manage it. And School Trustees Association has warned that this blurs even further the line between governance and management. 
Is it possible, sir, that what this is about is the fact that the minister can remove boards of trustees but cannot remove principals or teachers? The minister has had a problem implementing national standards. And there are still schools, even more schools now after the farce of e astel and other testing, that realise that, realize that national standards are flawed beyond repair. So possibly the minister has now, or the ministry, has suggested this is a way to place pressure on to make sure that the national standards will be met. And the final thing is, sir, Mr Banks forgets that of the 20% of children in the tail, 5% are children with special needs. Every one of those children has an IEP, an individual education programme, to attain their best. But Mr Banks holds so much ignorance around the field of education that it's impossible to have a conversation with him, sir. Colin King. Mr Speaker, it's a pleasure to take a call in the third reading of the Education Amendment Bill.